It's the OK Football Luton Town Show. Good to have you all along with us. I'm Oli Kay and I'm here in the heart of High Town in the world famous Bricklayer's Arms. I'm here with my co hosts, Beefy, Wedge, and producer Matt. How are you all doing today, fellas? Uh, I'm doing good. I've maybe calmed down a little bit after yesterday. Maybe. We'll see as we go through the pod. Mm. Yeah, and Wedge? Yeah, three points. Take it. Not happy. Quite miserable. <laughs> Quite miserable. <laughs> uh, that, this echoes my emotions. Yeah, it's amazing. We won that, but at the same time, everyone's so deflated, aren't they? Yeah, it was a, it was a very strange game uh, to be at, but we won. Back-to-back -back victories. Back-to-back -back victories, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. You can't ask for more, can you? But now it's time to round up everything going on around Kenilworth Road this week. And we'll take a look back to that victory over Sheffield Wednesday. And it was a dominating victory, wasn't it? In our <laughs> news segment. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. Shamona. Right, chaps. Luton to Sheffield Wednesday won a game that split the fan base in how it went. Well, I wouldn't actually say it split the fan base. Everyone, I don't think it split the fan base yeah, at all. I think everyone agrees. Everyone agrees that it's a good three points, but ultimately everyone's pretty dejected about the performance. Should we start with the negatives? Okay, start That's with the good, negatives. Good Go on, so, man, let's kick it around. So what we've got like 25 minutes for this negative section. <laughs> um, the 3-4-3 three, three doesn't work. It hasn't worked since Brighton, let's be honest. This is a team that until yesterday had won three games in 2024. And no matter which players we have available, plays the system because Rob has a philosophy. My God, it doesn't work. That first 70 minutes yesterday was utterly dreadful. Like, we looked terrible. No ability to keep the ball, no attacking threat, no width. We're playing with... Two, the two guys at the side are effectively advanced fullbacks and then you've got two inverted wingers and we look like a team with no width. How is that even possible? Um, you've got Eli up front on his own, completely isolated. His touch has deserted him. He can't control the ball. Spent the whole game lying on the floor claiming he should have a free kick. I mean, it was just dreadful, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you talk about the width. Um, I seem to notice that Clark and Chong seem to be playing narrower but not supporting Eli. So they weren't giving any options to uh, to Doughty or Walters to go wide, but then they weren't picking up second balls when it gets knocked up to Eli. So they were almost in no man's land. Yep. Just difficult to progress forward at all yesterday. Well, we're a team that plays out the back, but has no creative midfielder in place to enable that. Like, where's the engine that makes this whole thing work? Walsh had a bit of a quiet game. I don't think he was bad, but I don't think he was great. Um, what that system needs desperately is Ross Barkley. And we don't have Ross Barkley anymore. So we need to think about whether this is the system that's going to work for us. I mean, playing out from the back, we started off doing it because clearly that's the philosophy. As soon as the fans got a bit upset, Kaminsky started punting every single ball long. So is it the plan or isn't it the plan? Well, I don't think Rob Edwards um, was very happy with the fans sort of dictating how we played. And it, it's something that has been sort of going around on, on, on socials where, you know, at the end of the game, Rob couldn't get down the it tunnel. It did, didn't look like a happy man, did no, he? No, he didn't. Like, he just won 2-1. Like, what are your thoughts, Matt? Yeah, I was I was talking to you about this on the way here. Like, watching his video post-match interview, it really does look like he has aged somehow. <laughs> <laughs> don't, know, don't know how, don't know why, but yeah, he he was just very dejected, I think, about the whole thing. Do you, do you think that's because we only started playing well when he had to change his system to a back four? <laughs> <laughs> so he's almost proved him, against ten men. Yeah, yeah, he's proved himself wrong. <laughs> oh, like, in all fairness, like I've seen us play against ten men. You know, ten men with Nathan Jones, ten men with Rob Edwards, and I thought as soon as they went down to ten men, I was like, right, uh, I think if we score this penalty, a, a draw is the best we're going to get because, you know, when you play against ten men, they go to a low block and make it incredibly hard to to play pass, but. You know what? Let's talk. Let's for, talk about some positives, okay? So uh, we're not finished with the negatives, yeah, well, are we? Okay, the eighty-third minute, Tom Kraus and Victor Moses yeah. come on, and they look proper players. Victor Moses looks like he hasn't lost any of his yeah. pace. Tom Kraus, he, he's busy. He's industrious. He, he, 
you know, maybe he's not the best with the ball at his feet, but you know what? He tries passes. He was trying progressive passes. He was a willing runner. He'd give the ball, he'd run, he'd receive the ball. And was, that, that's what really lit the touch paper. Yeah, it did. Um, there were two two big changes, like you say. Uh, Moses and Doughty out there, didn't they look good, the pair of them? Mm. Like when they were sort of working together and Doughty was overlapping and that's what made the second goal effectively. I, I uh, love that. So with Moses's pass, the pass he gave to Doughty. Oh, the weight on it. Just, the weight on it was perfect, but also it made Doughty's mind up, up for him. He's yeah. like, no, you are going to You have to go on, time. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that you, I, I've given you just a little bit of pitch. You know, you better hit this first time. There's no way you're taking a touch before sending this yeah. cross in. It was a great cross. I mean, we were lucky because Morris clearly handled the ball before scoring. It's it's really no, obvious. No. It's so obvious. Come no, on. Ball to hand. That that doesn't account if you score. If a player scores and the ball has hit his <laughs> hand even accidentally. Joe Taylor at Wembley. It's a free kick. Yeah, that, that unfortunately that was VAR, wasn't it? You know? Uh VAR possibly wouldn't have given that goal, would it? No. Uh, oh no, that would have been ruled out by VAR, definitely. That's true. Good uh, thing we're in the championship. Though. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> thing. I mean, just a point. It was probably. I'm not one who criticizes referees being a referee very often, but my God, he was dreadful yesterday for both of us. You know, the penalty is a talking point because I think you could give that either way. It hit. It looked in the replay like it hit high on the arm, which is a green area. Down. But he moved. He moved. He moved his arm. It was the movement. He moved towards the ball, but regardless of whether you move towards the ball and whether your arm is extended, the area of your armpit is green and isn't a handball. But you know, it's very, very close. And I, I think you can justifiably give the penalty, at which point you have to give the red card. You've got really no other choice. But our goal, yeah, that should never have stood. And you've got an assistant referee who could see it perfectly because he's in line with the player and he should be looking at it side on. So how we got away with it, I don't know. I'm just glad we did. Yeah, well, okay. So Danny Rolls comments after the game. He flat out came and said the better team lost. I wouldn't say they were the better team. I don't think they came and made it an exciting game at all. They set up, I think, very similar to us. and Great time wasting. Yeah. Great time. Very physical, weren't they? Yeah. And yeah, it was Doughty which had his, held, his head yelled off by the referee halfway through the first half, yeah. <laughs> walking with the ball. I mean, again, with the referee, he, he did my head in yesterday. He was... Yeah, it was poor. Poor, yeah. Yeah, I I wouldn't say they were the better te- better team, but I'm not sure they deserved to lose either. Um, I think maybe what I'm thinking is we didn't deserve to win, nor did they. So a draw would have been a fair result. I mean, their goal, wow, he took that well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Can, me and producer Matt were talking about this on the way here. Who was picking him up? Yeah, <laughs> I watched it back and I I'm shocked. There was no one within 15 yards of Barry Bannon. Thing is, how many times do we concede goals from unmarked players at the back post? Yeah. Happened against QPR. <laughs> happened against Sheffield Wednesday yesterday. Yeah, we pressed but, them too. With, yeah, uh, Will Keane but, there. I mean, you talk about the finish. I mean, that's what Barry Bannon does, though, isn't it? You know, you give him any sort of space, he, he's going to put that away. Well, he, he didn't really need to take it on this phenomenal first time volley oh, that he did. Oh, first time volley. He, he could have um, he could have sat on it for 10 minutes because like you say, we had no one anywhere near him at all. And it, it, your back three, if they're going back onto the six yard boxes as a cross coming in, it naturally falls to your midfielders to be picking up on the edge of the box and they were just nowhere. Now, it was a quick turnover, Doughty losing the ball um, that gave them the chance, but still you'd expect someone to be there at least within 10 yards of him and there just wasn't. I, I, well, I, I honestly don't know who was going to be picking up. It could have been... Well, we we're, were trying to figure yeah, it out, we, weren't we? We were trying to work Ruel it out. Waters? Maybe Walters. Maybe. Do you, do you think we were asking too much of our wing-backs in Walters and Doughty to be going forward with the pace they do, but covering the three centre-backs as well. This they is why the back three doesn't work. Do. Yeah, yeah. They, we give them yeah. too much. And Mengi does not suit that left-sided centre-back position. He just doesn't. But now you, I think we bought McGuinness in on the assumption that Mengi was leaving. And so now we're left with too many. Yeah, too many good <laughs> Too many good centre-backs. So we've, yeah. we've got this three now to fit them all in when actually a back four is probably where we should be. This is why Amari Bell is so important to us because he's yeah. that left centre-back. And when he so wasn't balanced. in the squad, I was upset because he wasn't there. 
Is he? Is he? He must be injured because he wasn't even on the bench. Yeah, he is injured. Yeah. Um, but hopefully it's not too serious and he is back. Like if we if we pick through the bones of, of Sheffield Wednesday's first goal as well again. So Alfie Doughty was leading a counter attack. Uh, it was interesting that pretty much until the 80th minute, all our chances created were set pieces or counter attacks. Alfie Doughty leading the charge gets turned over by Jan Valery, and and Jan Valery charges into a completely open space. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's Marv and Mengi, and between the two of them, they don't know who's going to the ball. And then the ball comes in, Barry Bannon completely unmarked, as we discussed. I don't understand how, as a, as a former centre back, Rob Edwards can look at that and think, "Oh, yeah, may, it's, maybe it's I'll going be, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's go, th- this is great. <laughs> it's, it's the meme of that dog sitting in the house on on fire. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, this is fine. <laughs> it's um." <laughs> That was one of the most worrying things yesterday. They looked like a team that had never played together before for a long chunk of the game. And when it's almost the same team that's been playing together for a year, playing in exactly the same system they've been playing for nearly a year, how is that possible? Yeah, well, you know, my co-host Mark Ryman, who does the match previews with me, he said before the QPR game, we we look like a team that's still in the midst of pre-season. I'm inclined to agree um essentially the team have to start playing together sooner rather than later and we need to maybe just go back to the fundamentals if if the philosophy isn't working you you embrace the fundamentals because that is where like wins are, are built from yes we won yes we won but at the same time if you want to win convincingly do the fundamentals that just be hard to beat and I, i'm tired of conceding first in games and then having to claw back that that happens a lot in the Premier League, and yes, we 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 always the first so, five minutes of every yeah, game. Yeah, we were almost. so admirable with every performance in the Premier League. Um, but that was the Premier League; it was a free hit. But this is the Championship now, and we, you know, yes, it, we have to respect it. It's a good league, but we have to stop conceding first in games and having to climb up a mountain to get back into them. What well, is the weight of expectations this year as well, which wasn't there last year. Like you say, it was a free hit, do what you like, and everyone will think you're great if you lose heroically. We're not even playing heroically anymore. It looks like a neutered version of the team that played in the Premier League. You know, where's the team that will one nil up against Liverpool for, you know, until the last seconds of the game? Just, we don't look like that team at all anymore. Yeah. The only thing I can take away is that we're not getting steamrolled by a team. Since Burnley, we haven't looked like we haven't played off the park. We're just shooting ourselves in the foot more than anything. Well, we haven't played any teams that are actually going to, you know, dunk on us. Mm. Like, uh, that 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 schedule is coming in October when we've got to play a lot of the heavy hitters. We've got to play Borough. We've got to play Sheffield United. To, um, we'll talk about them a bit later. But, um, and, and we've got to play Watford. Like, that is the game where we got to turn up for. we got to be on it. Um, but, Regardless, let, let's let's put the, the Sheffield Wednesday game to bed now. Let's have a look at what else has gone on around Kenilworth Road this week. Fortunately, quite a quiet week compared to last week. So the day we release this pod, so we record on a Sunday and we release it on a Tuesday. Alfie Doughty signed a new long-term deal. And I, I think that's absolutely fantastic business. He's one that a lot of Premier League teams are looking after and monitoring. So I think... Brilliant business tying him up to a deal, um, regardless of whether there's a non-promotion clause in there. I think it's good business protects his value. Yes. Well, why, why so negative about Alfie Doughty? Love Alfie Doughty. He loves he, the club. He does He's one of the club. first names on the team sheet, so to get him he on takes a long-term all the contract, pieces, doesn't he? Yeah, I think it's a great bit of business. Great business. Great business. He's just increasingly frail defensively. I think well because he he's he shouldn't be he shouldn't be defending too much. I know the modern wing back should be good going forward and defensively, but that's why you, when you play a three at the back, you have someone that sits back behind him to actually mop up when he well, goes forward. You play four at the back, you play Mario Bell as a left back and push Alfie Dowd up to exactly. a left mid. Because you very imagine Matt Taylor Amari is an attacking left winger. Well, let's look back. Uh, let's look to the potential ideal scenario where Rob realises the back three doesn't work and we go to the back four <laughs> and then you've got what Walters and Burke as your fullbacks uh, 
Walters and Bell as your fullbacks and two centre halves there, and then Doughty playing left midfield. I think that could work really well. It will work really well. Um, but in his current position, it's just not working for him. No, he, his output is still incredible. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it could be better, but I, yeah, I, I dream of a four four two with Alfie Doughty playing left midfield as you or said a, Matt or 4-3-3 three, three would be fine too yeah 4-3-3 uh, three, three. can you imagine him as a left winger for yep like quality it'd be insane you know like the the, the defensive shackles just melt away mm-hmm. and Alfie Doughty you, you get him in full glorious form just going forward no going back wonderful and uh the other bit of news around Kenilworth Road is shirts are in look Beefy's got one of the black it's definitely black. It's definitely black. black. It's yeah, not it's, blue. It's one hundred percent black. It's not even like the Father Ted. Like <laughs> very, 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 very dark blue. It's actually black. I'm looking but, at it with my own eyeballs. There's there's a real problem with our shirts in terms of stock, but there's another problem as well. Why are we still having this sort of iron on plastic crap for our sponsors? We're not. Well, un- you, you we're need not. To get back to. We're not a non-league glorious. club in the nineties. <laughs> I mean, it's just a shambles. This. Uh, this is the same prices are perfectly printed where the sponsor's name is printed in the shirt so you, it doesn't deteriorate when you wash it and that mm. sort of thing. And yet this feels like a shirt from 10 years ago. What on earth is going on? Fair play to the club because they had these turned around really, really quickly where, where after the Kappa deal fell through. <laughs> Although if you believe some podcasts, it was the plan all along. Just saying. It obviously wasn't the plan all along. Um, you know, they, they have very limited stock. I could I want to get the the third kit, but they didn't have it in my size, which is um They didn't de- have it yeah. didn't have it at all by the time I went in. <laughs> well they didn't have it in, in, in any size ed. Small, medium, large for the third. They had uh, the black one in other sizes. Yeah, they had a bigger range of sizes in the home kit that we've had for two years. They've had uh, I wonder if yeah. it's like do you remember when Prime came out? And they had they were sat on warehouses of the stuff, but they wouldn't send it to the shops to create like this fake idea that it was incredibly rare. <laughs> and there were kids forking over ten quid for a bottle of prime at the time, whilst what's his name had thousands and thousands of units sat there. I reckon there's a warehouse somewhere full of loot and away and third kits, but we're not releasing it to create the buzz. Well, there was a, they cited distribution issues uh supply and distribution issues no it wasn't supply i can't remember the exact word but distribution issues is funny considering Luton is a major distribution hub what with an airport a major airport here but hey like let, let's not go too hard in. I, i'm sure there'll be another um actually no they probably won't say anything but never mind never mind um that was all the news from around kenilworth what? road this week right now it's time for mark the hatter's super question of the week mark the hatter he's put a question to us mark the hatter He's put a question to us. Okay, so obviously, thank you as always to Mark the Hat for the super question of the week. The question this week is Yesterday, Loon produced a rousing comeback to beat Sheffield Wednesday 2 1 at home after trailing to a Barry Bannon volley. Since 2004, Loon have come from behind to beat Sheffield Wednesday at home on three separate occasions once on the 27th of February 2021 winning 3-2 after going two goals down. Another on the 20th of February, 2007, with another 3-2 victory after being 1-0 down. And finally winning again 3-2 after being 2-0 down on the 1st of May, 2004. Focusing on the 3-2 win on the 20th of February in 2007, how many of the goal scorers and members of the starting lineup can you name from that day? Which, uh, which game was that? The th- 2007. Yes. 2007. February, 20th of February, 2007 against Sheffield Wednesday. 3 2. So we were in League One? Yeah. Rowan Vine. Nope. I'm completely stumped with this one. Me too. Drew Talbot. Yes. Ooh, Drew Talbot. Nice. Dave that- Edwards. No, no, yeah. Dave Edwards was like a season later. David Bell. Yes. Thank you for the, the tea up there. Yeah, nice. Um, Sol Davis. No. Fun mm-hmm. fact, from two of the players, you can get my name. <laughs> well, David Bell. 
Yep. Which we've already said. Matthew Spring. Yep. Yeah, my favourite player of all time. I was going to say Keith Keane. Yeah, Keith Keane, yep. Oh, well done. Yeah. Yep, good one. How many have we got? Jake Howells. Jake Howells. No, you, no. you would have been a bit you're missing, too young. You're missing the goalkeeper. You're missing a right back and a centre back and a left back. Missing the entire So are you looking band. at Mark <laughs> Tyler? No, or Mark Tyler, a little he, bit later. he joined in the conference. Um, so oven gloves. Not oven gloves. No, oven, no, no. Uh, Ovendale. No, 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 it won't be Ovendale. <laughs> Um, he left like uh, on our way up. Um, Marlon Beresford. Yep, I was yeah. going. Well left back. So it wasn't Sol Davis. Lewis Emmanuel. No, yep. really. Yep. Oh. Really, I, I thought he joined later. What what division were we in? Were we in, in two thousand seven? League one. It was. Definitely. It depends if it was 07, 08 or oh six oh seven. February oh seven. So it would have been. 07, 06, 07. No, February 07. February 07. So 06, been... 07. Oh, yeah. Oh, good point. Okay, so we would have been in the championship. So hey, 04, uh, 05, we were promoted. 05, 06, championship. We would have been relegation season. 05, 06, 06, 07, we're getting relegated. Um... Well, this is a tough. Who we got? Who we got left? Uh, what What I might do is just to make this a bit easier. So if I go through the list of players, you guys try and get the goal scorers. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so the goalie was obviously Marlon Beresford. As he, he was one of the goal scorers. Aren't he? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it was Kevin Foley, Marcus Heikkinen, Keith I Keane. Foley had gone by then. Lewis Emanuel, well, Dean Steve Morgan, Howard. Steve Robinson, Matty Spring. David Bell, Drew Talbot, and Bjorn Rundstrom. Bjorn Rundstrom. Subs that came on were Adam Boyd and Richard Langley. Oh, obviously Adam Boyd scored, who, right? Uh, who were the goal scorers? Not a clue. <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> I'm certain of it uh, now. I'll, I'll, I'll have a guess. Matthew Spring scored? No. Drew Talbot scored. Drew Talbot? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. He Drew decent. Talbot scored twice. He did not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorn Rundstrom. Yep, Bjorn yeah. Rundstrom. The last one's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Well, he was, was there Marlon Beresford? It was, it was, <laughs> he was, I told it was, you. It was our joint top goal scorer for the first few games of the season. David Bell. No, own goal. Oh, own goal. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we've been cheated by Mark the Hatter on that yeah. one with the, the own goal. I think we should claim a win on this. <laughs> we, At least a draw. Maybe. We got We got like six of the players, right? Yeah, that was tough, tough, tough. tough. Uh, I they think I'm declaring any... this one a draw. All right. Well, thanks, lads. Mark. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Toughy. <laughs> Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? I don't know, Ollie. Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? Because there's, there's a, a joke, joke in here. Why did the old man fall down the well? He couldn't see that well. Man went to his doctors, and the doctor told him, masturbating before sex can help him last longer during the act. The man thought, what the hell, I'll give it a try. So he spent the rest of the day thinking about where to do it. He couldn't do it in the office, he couldn't use a restroom, it's a bit too open. He was thinking about an alley, but he thought that's a bit unsafe. Finally, he came up with a solution. On his way home, he pulled his truck over on the side of the highway. He got out, crawled underneath as if he was examining the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Satisfied with the privacy, he undid his pants and started to masturbate. He closed his eyes and thought of his lover. As he grew closer to orgasm, he felt a quick tug at the bottom of his pants, not wanting to lose the mental fantasy. He kept his eyes shut and said, what? He heard, this is the police. What's going on down there? The man replied, oh, I'm just uh, checking out the rear axle. It's busted. Well, the police officer said, you might want to check your brakes too as your car's moved down the hill. <laughs> yeah, smash that. 10 out of 10. Yeah, lovely. well done. Yeah. Very good. Uh, right. Now it's time to look ahead to our next game against Plymouth, Wayne Rooney's Plymouth Argyle. And we play the Sluga Six. Sluga, 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 Sluga Six. Six, 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 six,
Right, this is our predictor league that's ran by Phil. Obviously, Phil isn't here today because we have Wedge. So I I guess I'll be giving the graphics and the and the, the score lines today. Well, not the graphics, because they will be out on social media. Trust us, they will be there. So I top scored this week. I got 11 points and the standout result being the 2-1 home win, which uh, pretty much everyone here bagged. So well done, lads. Well done. And uh, not not you, Wedge, because uh, <laughs> you, you didn't predict it. Phil did. Um, except Matt from the Wednesday Till I Die pod. So he gained eight points. Beefy got nine. Matt and Phil both got a season high for them of 10 points. Up and running, boys. Well done. Uh, so the games next week are Hull, and Car- Hull versus Cardiff, Leeds versus Coventry, Middlesbrough versus Stoke, Millwall versus Preston, Watford versus Sunderland, and of course, our Friday night game away to Plymouth. And let's discuss this game. So Friday night, 8 p.m., perfect for fans making long round oh, trips, just, isn't it? Just the EFL are a complete disgrace, aren't they? Yeah. What yeah, a bunch I, of absolute muppets. I love it how Sky really have the, the thoughts and feelings of the but fan base uh, at heart. You're, you're the league. You can choose to take the money. Or you can choose to take slightly less of the money and say, we don't think Plymouth on a Friday night is a particularly good choice to be televised. Yeah, like but you've they, got to, you they got to finish your work week pretty early to, <laughs> to get down yeah, to Plymouth. Thursday evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bonkers and it's really bad for the fans that travel. And, you know, I, I think we'd sell a good eight 900 tickets there out of our allocation. And it's a really sad that those guys are going to have to either go 12 o'clock and come back on the coach get home at 4 a.m just absolutely ridiculous it's awful isn't it 4 a.m for you know if you're lucky if you yeah if you're lucky yeah yeah brutal uh so we've got back-to-back wins in the bag and now we head to wayne rooney's plymouth argyle as skull uh, as sky lovingly call them uh their season hasn't really started up just yet they had a great win against Sunderland that absolutely no one called except me <laughs> and uh, then a tight loss to West Brom, which uh, was quite unfortunate. They, uh, I felt the tide was turning for Plymouth. I just, I just don't think Wayne Rooney is a particularly good manager. I it mean, seems his philosophy is bleeding through to the players, though. Uh, well, yeah, but there's a point at which you have to decide that you're not very good at this and seek alternative employment. And I feel like Wayne is more or less at that point now. You know, you you can't say he's got a great pedigree as a manager or even a great record as a manager because he has neither of those. But one day he will be Man United manager. He said that. <laughs> well, <laughs> to be fair, although I'm saying he doesn't have a great pedigree as a manager, he's got to be better than Eric Ten Hag, hasn't he? <laughs> True. I'm, I'm bitter because Man United cost me my bet yesterday by not being able to beat Palace. So I'm particularly down on Ten Hag at the moment. My condolences. So this will be the first time we play against Plymouth since the 9th of March 2019 when we were in League One. We played out a nil-nil draw. And I won't be surprised if you guys don't remember that, but we also did beat them 5-1 at home that very same season. I don't think we're going to get five on Friday night. <laughs> I don't. This team just doesn't look like it can score five goals in the same game. Um, I, I, I think Plymouth's going to be tougher than we expect as well. Um, everyone's tougher than we expect. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I saw a stat the other day where I think since two seasons ago, Plymouth are one of only about four teams to get a hundred points at home. So it will be difficult. Home park's never a good place to go. Like I, I remember back in the. Um, Back in 2001, when uh, Joe Kinnear was the manager and him and Paul Sturrock had like a proper nasty back and forth in, in the papers throughout that entire season uh, as we were pushing for promotion from League Two or Division Three, it was, as it was called then. But looking forward to that game, Connor has it their keeper. He's like the backup to Mike Cooper. It looks like he's out until about Christmas, which... Mm. Um, I hate to see players get injured, but I think that's really good for us because he looks a proper keeper. Yeah, he's far and away the star there, unfortunately, for them. 
Yeah. And uh, well, the only thing is, we have to have shots to test oh, the keeper. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. I hope we go two up top. We have we're, to. We're not going to. No, we gonna. have to. Like, hopefully, Rob Edwards realizes no, it, he's it, not it gonna wasn't realize. working. We've got to create chances. We are going to play 3 4 3 until the day Rob Edwards leaves this football club. He's got a philosophy. Yeah, philosophies don't work. With no. Morris coming on and scoring a brace, he's got to start. Yeah. Do you drop out of Bayo and yeah, that, bring that, him in, or that that's that's the concern, right? Like, is he going to just straight swap them? Yes, he can't do that. You got to play them both together. They both scored ten plus if, goals in the Premier League. If they both start, Adebayo will be central, and Morris will be coming in off the right as an inverted winger. You can guarantee it. It doesn't matter which players he has available. He will play the three four three. Yeah, well, look, you, you have four central midfielders. There is a possibility that you can drop one of them to accommodate Carlton Morris. We we can figure it out. It like for me, like I, it's hard to pick one midfielder that has to miss out. But I'd take Jordan Clark out of there. I place Chong centrally, and then you know have Elijah and Carlton up top together. And I, I feel like against any defense, whether you're you're playing against a back four, a back three, they're going to cause trouble. They would cause trouble if you played them like that. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's almost too simple. But then, if I had a billion pounds, I'd buy the football club and insist on that change. But I don't, and we <laughs> won't. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't think owners can uh, can impact those decisions uh, on the playing staff, can they? Of course, you can. Well, yeah. Then, then you're you're in the uh, Dai Yong level. Yeah. Aren't you? What if the manager doesn't want to follow your instructions? Then oh yeah, then they can get... seek alternative employment. Yeah. Then you get a sycophant. Yeah. Exactly. As well. uh, are, are you guys feeling optimistic about this? I'll start with you. I'm I'm not that optimistic. No. Wonderful. Thanks for bringing us all down. I think it. I think it's going to be an incredibly <laughs> tough. As if we could come down any further after yesterday. <laughs> I think it's going to be it's going to be an incredibly tough away game. Um, but we'll see what happens on the pitch. I guess wedge. Um, I'm always optimistic. Yeah, um, and I just think are like you just saying about you don't know who to drop, but then who do you bring in as well? Like this, the depth we've got in all our positions now, there's no reason why we can't win games, which is why I stay optimistic. Yeah, this is a quality squad. It's Some so absolutely good. brilliant yeah. players, and it may just come good. It may be that in two weeks I'll be speaking to this camera here. And giving a heartfelt apology to Rob Edwards for ever doubting his system, but I don't think that's going to happen. I hope so. I, I can't wait for that. If, if it does, I will do it. <laughs> right. Well, that's us all done for this week. If you've enjoyed this episode of OK Football's Luton Show, please like the video, subscribe for even more Luton Town content. A big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification, and Carry On for giving us these toys and the mixer and also a big thank you to our podcast sponsors the record shop in amersham wherever you are if you're local to amersham and collect vinyl go check them out they got vinyl they got cds they got guitars it's great it's just a big old cave of vinyl and if you mention the okay football show when you go there you'll even get a discount just be nice about it and uh, a big thank you to our host the bricklayers arms in luton you gotta, you gotta come in in here if you're looking for. Just, just good come beer. in. Yeah, just you come in. Just come in, hang out. It's really good. Mm, they have ball game nights, quiz nights. Good yeah, stuff, don't right? come to the quiz. I don't need any more competition. <laughs> but uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the show, and thank you all for tuning in. And most importantly, come on, you hatters.